Greetings, greetings viewers and subscribers. So in this journey, we are once again heading to Juicy Party, Uptown Savlamar. We'll be starting the journey at Dunbar's River. We are going down Hudson Street. We are going to turn and go across. Well, we're going to go down Greyjardy Street a little bit. Then we are going to go up Darling Street. Then we are going to come back across on Lewis Street. Go up Beckford Street and go to Juicy Patties. We are heading to Juicy Patties. Well, this was a morning commute. So we are heading to Juicy Patties to buy some porridge. What kind of porridge you want? Well, they have how many corn? They have peanut porridge and they have cornmeal porridge. Which one you want? I think I'm going to have some peanut porridge today. Oh, you want the how many corn? Okay. So one how many corn porridge for you? <laughs> All right, sit back. Relax and drive with me. Now, we are going to be late today without any apology. Because the stories that we are going to bring, we were awaiting some updates. So that is the reason why we are late today. So we are not apologizing because we wanted to give you good information. You are going to want to stick around to the last story. You hear what I said? You are going to want to stick around to the last story. A man in St. James was taken out. He was taken out in broad daylight, midday yesterday. Sunday, December 12th. He was 56 years old and he was a chef. You are going to want to hear why this man was taken out. Parents, parents, yes, you mothers and you fathers. Aunts and uncles too. You know that your children are involved in certain things and you turn a blind eye to it. Either you are benefiting or you simply don't care. You are going to want to listen to why this father was taken out. I put an image of him on the thumbnail. I'm not even going to attempt to put an image of him in the video. Because we know how YouTube is. The least little thing, they flag your video for it. So, you're going to want to stick around to the last story. But, first up, and these are the stories that we love to bring. We are learning that the Montego Bay police, they seized an illegal weapon last night. The seizure, it took place, like we said, last night, Sunday, December 12th, 2021, almost 10 p.m. It took place at a place named Browns Lane in the Granville area in the parish of St. James. We are told that a police military party they were on patrol in the browns lane area when on approaching a shop they saw a group of men the men and seeing the patrol they ran off the police and soldiers they went to the location in fact five persons were still there they made a search and they recovered one glock 19 9 mm pistol the serial number for this weapon it was erased this weapon it was affixed with a magazine containing 10 rounds of 9mm cartridges. We are told that the police took the 5 persons who were still there in their custody. We haven't gotten any information if anyone was charged. But if that information come out, we will be advising you. Once again, congratulations to the St. James police and soldiers for the recovery of this weapon. These are the types of news that we like. These guns, these guns, they are here to shoot people. I can't put it any better. They are here to shoot people. So, congrats again to the St. James Police. Now, last week, Monday, Monday the 6th of December, 2021, we brought you a story. We told you that an unidentified man was shot and taken out. The incident took place at Megitop in Salt Spring in the parish of St. James. It took place almost 11.30 p.m. It is said that residents of Megitop, they heard loud explosions and summoned the police. On the arrival of the police, they found a man. He was found suffering from gunshot wounds to his head and his upper body. He was taken to the Calwa Regional Hospital where he was pronounced D-E-A-D. -E no, we didn't give you the name for that man. His name is Dexter McLeod. Dexter McLeod is in his mid-twenties. He's said to be an all-rounder. 
meaning he moved from community to community. He was also said to be a stocky, yeah man, a drug addict. What we are also learning is that at the time that Dexter was taken out, another man was with him. That man, he could not be found. It is said that that man, he was driving a Nissan AD wagon motor car. That man, he was reported missing to the police. And the family had been searching for him from that time. No, yesterday morning, early yesterday morning, the family of the man who was reported missing, well, his name is Calvin Lawrence Jr. He was 20 years old and he lived at Salt Spring Road in the parish of St. James. So yesterday morning, Sunday, December 12th, 2021, sometime after 7 o'clock, the family of Calvin, they were searching the area. It is said that they went into an area named Flower Hill. In that area, a burnt out Nissan AD wagon motor car was found. When they looked into the burnt out Nissan AD wagon motor car, Calvin Lawrence, his skeletal remains were found. So from all indication, whosoever took away Calvin, they took him to Flower Hill, where they took him out and set the car on fire with him inside of it. Calvin, he was found on the back seat of the Nissan AD wagon motor car. We are told that he was positively identified by some clothing items that he was wearing by members of his family. We are also getting some reports that Calvin, his hands wasn't so clean at all at all. But we are going to leave that for another story. But that is the report that we are getting from one or two sources that Calvin, his hands were not so clean. Now, if you are here and you are watching this video, if you have not yet hit on the like button, remember to hit on it. If you have not yet subscribed to the channel, we are moving up, move up with us. We are now heading towards 60,000 subscribers. Remember, tell a friend to tell a friend to subscribe to this channel. Now, we are not sure whether or not we are going to put out a story tomorrow because we kind of have a full day tomorrow so you just might not hear us putting out any video tomorrow but if you don't hear us putting out anything tomorrow look out for us on wednesday we are gonna try to put out a video tomorrow but like i said we kind of have a packed day tomorrow but if not look out for us on wednesday now in the final story for today and you're gonna want to sit down and listen to this story and we can't make up these things trust me some of the time we bring some stories it come like a storybook we are reading or something we just can't make them up but we do the investigations remember we tell you we normally go above and beyond to get our information well that's what we do we go above and beyond to get the information to you about five years ago there was a group in, in Flagstaff, in the Flamstead area, in the parish of St. James. In this group were some young men. They were involved in the game and gun running and all kinds of things. It is said that there was a falling out of the groupings about three years ago. Shortly after the falling out, police came and made a raid. And it is said that the police recovered illegal weapons. As a result, some guys in the groupings, they accused one of their farmer friends as being the informer they alleged that he was the one who told the police about the illegal weapons shortly after that the guy was taken out it is alleged that he was taken out by at least one or two of the gang members or a member of that grouping one of the guys is popularly called bamed he was taken into police custody we are told that he spent about a month in police custody in relation to the death of that young man. But there was no evidence. The police had to let him go. We were trying to get the name of the guy, but we have not yet been able to get it. That guy who was taken out, at the time, he had, well, two half-brothers, meaning same mother, different father. One of his half-brothers goes by the name JT and the other one he goes by the name Perry 
it is said that when their half brother died, they were youngsters. They were about 13 and 14 years old. They are about. But they vowed that they are going to get rid of Bamed for taking out their brother. Fast forward to now. You remember on Saturday we carried a story and we told you that a man was shot at a party in Flagstaff. We told you that the man, he was taken to a hospital and he told the hospital staff that he was at this party Friday night, sometime after 10 p.m. to 11 p.m. thereabouts. And he told the staff that he was approached by two men who shot him. He received gunshot wounds to one of his hands. Now, at the time, we didn't give a name for the person who was shot. But we are learning. Well, we knew that it was the same Bamed who was shot. Remember, we told you that Bamed, follow me, you know. Ensure that you are following me. Remember, we told you that Bamed, he was accused of taking out Perry and JT's brother about three years ago. Well, Bamed, the allegations are that he was shot in his hand at this party and he identified his shooters as Perry and JT. Are you following me now? Yeah, man, the same half brothers of the guy who died some years ago. Bamed, he was treated at hospital and released. No. Here is where the story gets grimy. Alright, let me tell you something. Let me give you a background about these two youngsters. It is said that, well, JT is about 17 years old now. Perry is either 18 or 19. What we are learning is that both of them, they stopped going to school years ago because them joined the chopping line. Do you know what is the chopping line? Alright, let me give you a hint as to what the chopping line is. Even if nobody never call you yet, you must go on YouTube and see it. Um, hello, Mr. Jackson. My name is Claude Williams. I'm the president of the Publishers Clearing House. You have won for yourself 15 million United States dollars and the brand new Mercedes Benz. <laughs> oh, my son. <laughs> Why, because I never do it. Trust me. <laughs> they couldn't keep up. Anyhow, I hope you get me drift. That is what they call the chopping line. Yeah, man. Pick up your phone and have your bang of phone and call and tell people them win some money and you convince them. And persons, one of these days, one of these days, I'm working on a story because a lot of persons don't know how the scamming thing go. So I am working on it. I'm going to be coming back and see if I can explain as much as I know how the scamming thing go. Stand by for it. So, back on track. It is said that JT and Perry, them join the chopping line. Remember, we tell you that they were hell-bent on avenging their brother. We don't know what role the father played, but they were living at the house with their father. We don't know how a father could have his sons inside of the house and them stop going to school and start chop. I, I, I don't know how that could have happened. Sometimes we look at things from our perspective and we try and judge other people. Sometimes I try not to do it because here I am now saying that could never happen. Will never happen in my household. But sometimes it's best not to judge. But the truth is some of these parents, they are participating. They are partaking. They are involved. They are benefiting from the spoils. So, that incident happened Friday night where Bamed, he was shot. Yesterday, Sunday, December 12th, 2021, about 12 midday, Mr. Alan Ferguson is the father for JT. He was at his house at Flamstead when we are told that a group of men went there. They went there looking for Perry and JT. We are told that Perry and JT, they were inside of the house. They, and seeing the hoodlums, who were armed with guns, they ran away from the house. Made good their escape. But, Mr. Alan Ferguson, him never run. Because according to him, him and nobody not in an argument. He and nobody in an war. Hoodlums don't think that way. Most hoodlums 
think that if me come for you and me can't catch you kwaku, your shot are go get wet up. Your shot are go get burn up. And that is exactly what took place yesterday. Mr. Alan Ferguson, he was shot repeatedly by these hoodlums. He received gunshot wounds to his head, his abdomen, his chest, and at least one of his hands. At the time he was taken out, he was clad like you can see on the thumbnail in a marina and a multicolored shirts. The hoodlums, they then made good their escape on foot in the area. The police were called and Mr. Ferguson, 56 years old chef, he was taken to the Cornwall Regional Hospital where he was pronounced D-E-A-D. -E when this crime scene was processed, our information is that 14 14 9mm pen shells were recovered from the scene and we are almost sure that more rounds were fired. So you are now saying, what never him then go for? Why them have to give him so much shot? These hoodlums, they don't care about that. You think them care? Them come and them have put on gunshot and they are sending a message in the meantime. Now we are also learning that when Bamed was shot Friday night, he also had a weapon and that weapon fell from him. It is said that the weapon, it was taken up by one of the hoodlums who shot him. So, it's a two-way thing, you know, you know, because that grouping, they want back the gun, plus they are out for revenge. So you feel that this is going to stop for now? Do you think this is going to stop right now? Because JT and Perry, them know exactly who shoot Mr. Ferguson. So what? Uh, you know, feel say, who shoot Mr. Ferguson have parents too? You don't think they have parents or they have children? Because we are now learning that the guys, they are now adamant that they are going to take out Bamed's girlfriend. That is the information on the ground. They have been sending messages that they are going to take out Bamed's girlfriend. So you see why the mayhem. You see why the mayhem. You see why the mayhem continues. Blessed love, everybody.